guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel and a happy new year to all of us. I got this wig and beanie combo going on because my hair was sticking up in every which direction. I think it's cute. What do you guys think? So it is 2021 and March will mark nine years in the industry for me. It's been almost a decade since I graduated high school and if you would have told 18 year old me how the next decade was gonna unfold, you would blow her mind and she would not believe you. I'm just so grateful for the people who have been with me since the beginning as well as the people who have joined my journey along the way. I cannot say thank you enough. So in the beginning of my career, I used to do a lot of Q&A YouTube videos and I kind of stopped doing them over the years, mainly because they became repetitive. Not so much the relevant questions about the job and you know, like the fake profiles and what have you, but more so like the generic questions that I think a lot of different people get. Like what's your favorite color? What's your favorite animal? What's your favorite genre of music? They're not bad questions. They just kind of get boring to answer over and over again. And I'm sure they get boring for people to hear someone answer over and over again. So for a long time, I haven't really done any Q&A content. Well, it's a brand new year, wanted to do a new YouTube video. And I thought, let's get rid of all that generic stuff. Let's not do a Q&A. And instead I went through my Curious Cat, I went through my Tumblr and I went through my Q&As on Instagram. I picked out some of the most common questions, both for me and for people like me in general. I'm going to list them off, answer them, and I might give a little insight on why I think they're so common. So thank you for watching. I'm Ryden if you didn't catch it and let's begin. Number one, what is your most slash least favorite thing about working in the industry? Now this, like a lot of other questions, just boils down to public curiosity. I will say that I do think the public is dealing with a very limited amount of information about the adult industry, which is why I think there is so much curiosity surrounding this subject. Now for me, my most favorite part is just that it is a job that 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 is right for me. I've always considered myself to be a overtly sexual person, very interested in sexual things. So I really enjoy doing the job. I enjoy taking photos. I enjoy wearing looks, wearing cute little looks. I enjoy doing characters and I enjoy writing the scripts. But most of all, I really appreciate having a job as somebody who has ADHD, depression, anxiety, and mood issues to be able to control my schedule because there are some days where I just can't get out of bed, let alone work. And I need to be able to control my own schedule. And I really do have the privilege of doing that with this job. So just in general, I, I, I'm just so grateful for this job. My least favorite thing is probably the, the, the kind of hate that comes from sources you wouldn't expect. It's one thing to have people be hateful in the general public, but when you see somebody you look up to because they are empathetic, they care about important issues, and you see them care so much about others, but then when the subject of sex work comes up, they're closed-minded to the point of almost wishing violence. And not only does it hurt because of who I am, it also hurts because it makes all of that empathy and that open-mindedness seem fake and performative. So to me, the least favorite thing is the punch in the jaw, punch in the gut feeling of finding out somebody you look up to is very anti-sex work. Number two, have you ever been recognized in public and what do you do when you are recognized in public? Again, this is a job that I think a lot of people in the general public see as like putting yourself out there, bearing yourself to the public. And it's, it's almost like a worry based on stigma. For me, in the beginning of my career, I got recognized in public all the time. I got outed to my local community almost immediately. And people like to talk, people love drama. So people I didn't even know were just talking like, oh, you know about this girl in town who put her boobies out on Twitter and people would recognize me and walk up to me and be like, hey, you know, I recognize you from the boobies on Twitter, you know? And, and it definitely helped that in the beginning of my career, I had a very recognizable look and I had a very um, consistent look for about two years straight. So people knew what to expect when they saw me in public. <laughs> Nowadays, it's a little less. I do feel like people notice and recognize me in person, but they almost don't come up to me because they're not certain or they might be intimidated, especially because my look changes quite frequently. 
Furthermore, I do get kind of the Clark Kent effect because if you didn't know, I wear glasses. I can't see the far away things. I can't, I can't read uh, the signs at the McDonald's when I want to order a burger and some McNuggets. Um, so in real life, more times than not, I'm wearing glasses. And I do think some people don't expect me to wear glasses, especially because I don't wear them so often in my content. So that also gives me kind of a Clark Kent edge of like, I look no different and I'm not really trying to present myself any differently. But between the apprehension of not being entirely sure if it's me because my look is always changing and then the glasses, people don't expect the glasses, I do think I get recognized a lot less. But when people have recognized me, they've been so respectful. They've been so kind. I've taken photos with people. You know, I've sat down and like talked to people and gotten to know them. I'm very privileged. I, I, I've i had people be so incredibly kind to me. Number three, how do you cope with people using your photos? And why do you think people use your old photos so often? So first of all, the, the, the coping, uh, <laughs> I just have to. I don't really have a choice. I do everything I possibly can to do something about these fakes, and there's only so much I can do. I think we are a ways off as a society from having a standard for how we treat uh, content theft and, you know, fake profiles and catfishing and whatnot. So I, I, I don't think there is any foreseeable future when, where the dealing with this will be streamlined. So for me, it's just a, a matter of turning it into content. I mean, I have my exposing my fakes Instagram profile. I try to make content out of calling these people out. I try to make the best out of it I possibly can. As for why I think people use the old photos so often, um, and, and why people ask that, because I do think a lot of people ask that because they're like, well, you're nothing special and you were certainly nothing special back then. It's like, dude, trust me, I don't think it really has anything to do with me being hot shit or anything like that. Again, I had a consistent look for two years straight. I didn't really change much about my appearance at all. And I frequently, frequently, frequently posted photos and posted selfies every single day, a couple different ones a day. I don't know why, it was just something I was doing at the time. So there is so much out there that, and they all look so similar because I had such a consistent look that I do think you could rearrange them in, in, in any order and there would be no question of a linear timeline whatsoever. So they're easily accessible. Um, and furthermore, I do think everything about my style was just enough of whatever like, uh, category I was trying to fit into, like alternative, nerdy, you know, whatever, what, what, what have you, whatever uh, appealed to others about me wasn't too much. I was never too much of something. Number four, have you ever been approached for mainstream porn work and would you? Now, obviously, I, I think this question is very common because uh, the public's main idea of porn is the mainstream industry. I think people don't know how common it truly is for people to go out there and shoot and distribute their very own pornographies with no helps from the Hollywood studios. For me, yes, I've been offered. I'm not going to say what studios, it doesn't matter, honestly, because it doesn't matter because I, I am but a humble Ohioan. And most of the US-based mainstream pornography takes place in California. I do not travel a lot. I know travel is quite expensive. And for me personally, I, I do like the fact that when I shoot my own content and distribute my own content, I do have 100% control over where that content might go. Whereas when I do, if I were to work with another studio, it, it's kind of something that's completely out of my hands. It's a completely different ballpark that functions totally differently than the independent industry. And it's just not for me, at least not in the foreseeable future, would I ever? I don't know. I never say never when it comes to like work related things because I don't know what this industry is going to be six months from now, let alone a year, two years, five years from now, you know, things change. So who knows? Maybe someday I might work for a studio. I might own my own studio. Who knows? But for right now, I am just fine where I'm at in my humble Ohio roots shooting my own stuff. Number five, how do you deal with negative comments and anonymous hate? 
So uh, I, I think every adult entertainer deals with hate because there is so much hatred and stigma and like negative thoughts about sex work, about porn, about full service sex work, um, so on and so forth. I think everybody deals with it. I know I dealt with it a lot at the beginning of my career. Not so much now. I'm really, really lucky now. People are way nicer to me. Um, but for me, I, I don't let it get to me. I never did let it get to me, even when I responded to it quite often. But I, I, I just don't let it get to me. Because the fact of the matter is, I, I don't remember which like adult cartoon show had like a whole episode on this. But most people online that are like commenting mean shit or sending anonymous hate, they're not doing it because they have strict, strong convictions about what they're saying. They're doing it not even to get a reaction out of you, the person they're saying it to. They're doing it because they know that there are people who will defend you like like tooth and nail that to them that's an over the top response and that's funny and they want that over the top response. So when you put it into the context of like they really don't believe that as much as they're trying to make you believe it, it becomes way easier to ignore. Furthermore, I've noticed that if I don't, if I can't benefit in any way from like posting something that somebody has negatively said about me, like if there's no way I can make that funny, there's no reason for me to post it, you know? So I try to ignore a lot of stuff nowadays just simply because like, if I can't laugh at it, then it's not important to me and I'm just gonna ignore it and pretend it's not happening. Number six, how do you feel about people you know, friends, former classmates, or even people you don't like buying or watching your content? Um, I, I think it's different for every entertainer, but for me personally, um, I don't care. As long as you're not gonna make it weird or ask me for free content, I don't care. I really don't. <laughs> I truly and deeply do not care. Cause I know for a fact that A, there have been people that I went to school with who didn't know me, who I didn't know them other than us passing ships in the hall, you know? who after I did this, they found out about it and they reached out and were like, you know, I only remember from you from seeing you in the hallways, but like, I think what you're doing is really cool. And like, I admire that and like, good luck. Just in the same that like, I have people on like my OnlyFans or my websites or who have bought clips over the years who I know for a fact are people that I might've gone to school with or people that I know. I don't think anybody that do I don't like has ever bought my content, but if I did, again, as long as they're not making it like awkward or they're not making fun of me or, you know, they're not doing so with nefarious intent, I don't, I, I don't care. Do what you want to do. I, I, I create the content I create. I don't really care who views it as long as you're not being weird. Not to say that there isn't people I know who have contacted me and tried to get the free content. Tons of people. Like, of course, I think everybody's had the whole, oh, I used to think you were so hot in high school and the content, I just can't believe how you've blossomed. Like, no, you thought I was weird. I wore a tutu. I was weird. You did not think I was hot in high school. You think I'm hot now. And honestly, it'd be more realistic and I'd respect you more if you just admit that you thought I was weird as fuck in high school, but and maybe you even think I'm weird as fuck now. But if you think I'm cool, like what I'm doing, that's cool. Just, just don't lie to me and be like, oh, I was so into you in high school. Cause like, Dude, one of my favorite bands was asking Alexandria. I was a piece of shit. You did not like me. A couple Thanksgivings ago, back when I used to have a premium Snapchat, I had a guy who I was involved with way, 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 way back when I was in like high school message me and be like, hey, like, how about you give me that Snapchat? Like trying to get it for free because we used to be involved with each other, which I just kind of read it and ignored it because I always at least give like one kind of like, all right, I'm gonna let you realize that what you said was really stupid. I'm giving you one chance here. Just, just walk away. <laughs> and again, this is after Thanksgiving. So everybody's posting on Facebook, like what they're grateful about this that year and whatnot. And I have him as a friend on Facebook and he's posted about his fiance, like can't be more grateful for my fiance this year. And it's like, dude, oh, you 
really shouldn't be asking a girl who you used to like sleep around with in high school for her premium Snapchat for free. That is way, way, way out of line for a billion reasons. Alright guys, I think I'm gonna stop this video here before it gets too long. The whole point of me doing this, I suppose, comes back to the same core issue of curiosity and there kind of being a, a, a lack of, of common information about the adult industry among the masses. So I wanted to just clear some things up, point some things out that are pretty common, because I, I want them to become part of common knowledge, if you understand. So what do you guys think? What is a question that you guys think would be common that you did not see me bring up here? Leave it down below. Maybe I'll include it in the next common questions YouTube video. Uh, or, you know, leave anything else down in that comment section. Just be nice. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to check out my other YouTube videos and, I don't know, possibly subscribe. Maybe hit that notification button. Stick around with me because I think 2021 might be a super great year. Here's the hoping. <laughs> Alright, bye guys.